Hello everyone, hope you're well. Now I know from experience that a lot of learners get really nervous with these word sums when it comes to distance, speed, time, but I promise you, I am going to show you exactly how these questions work and I'm gonna show you um, little tricks that you can do and you will leave this lesson feeling like you understand them a lot better. In this lesson, we're gonna look at three different examples. All right, so let's start. So we are told that because there's certain things that if I can just show it to you, you'll see now what I mean. It just makes it so much easier. So we are told here that Mary left the movie theater and traveled toward the lake. Okay, so let's go draw a little picture. Okay, so I'm not gonna make it like super involved and that's just my way of saying I'm not actually that good at drawing. So let's just say this is Mary, okay? And she's at the movie theater, movie, and she's gonna travel uh, towards a lake, okay? So this is the lake. Then two hours later, Adam is also gonna probably do the same. What does it say? He left traveling at 65 miles an hour in an effort to catch up to Mary. After traveling for three hours, Adam finally caught up. Okay, so the lake is actually pretty irrelevant. Um, so what happens is that Mary's gonna start driving, okay? Um, I don't know, maybe her and Adam had a little bit of an argument or something, who knows? And then Adam just needed like two hours to calm down and to cool off a bit. And then he decided, hey, I actually wanna get back with Mary. And then he speeds in his car at 65 miles an hour to try catch up with her. <laughs> and then after traveling for three hours, Adam finally catches up. The question is, find Mary's average speed. Okay, so. Let me show you how these questions work. The first thing that we need to know is the relationship between distance, speed, and time. And so what I often like to show students is this little triangle over here. Now what goes at the top of the triangle is the D for distance, then S for speed, and then T for time. Okay, so that, let me just remind that, we'll write that down for you. So the D is for distance. Your teachers probably showed you this, but I just wanna make sure. Um, in case there's some of you who have not had your teacher show you this, and then T is time. So the way that it works is the following. Uh, let's choose a letter, so I'll choose S. Okay, so look at S. So we can say um, S equals. Now look at the D, it's at the top, so we put it at the top. Look at the T, it's at the bottom, um, so we'll, you'll see now what I mean, so we say D over T. Let's choose another letter, uh, let's choose T. Okay, so T is equal. Then look at the D, it's at the top, and then look at the um, look at the S, it's underneath. Can you almost see it's like a divide sign? Uh, let me get a different color. It's almost like this is a divide sign, see that? So T is equal to D over S, like that, okay? Now let's look at D now, this is the interesting one. So we say D equals, now look at the S and the T, they are like next to each other, okay? So they are gonna be multiplied. Now this might be some bit weird for some of you, but you just gotta get used to this. So these are the three different formulas, okay? You might have to pause and just make sure you understood how we did that. So I'll quickly run through it once more with you. So we know that S, okay, is over here. So if you look at the D and T, it's almost like they're making a divide sign over there, so that, so that will be over each other, so we say D over T. Then if we look at the T, T is equal to, now look at this line over here, so you can say D over S. And then if you look at D, now D is at the top, so the S and the T are next to each other, so then we'll just multiply them, okay? All right, so those are the basics that we need to know. So please just go ahead, write these formulas down, um, and then we'll carry on. Okay, now what you're gonna do in these types of questions where it's distance, speed, time, I want you to make a table, as I said, or. I didn't actually say this, but maybe your teacher does this as well. So you're gonna make a little table, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna have four different columns. So let's make four columns. Let me make this one nice and big so we can really see what we're doing here. Okay, so you're gonna make four columns. Right, and you're gonna make three rows. And here you can say objects then you're gonna put distance, speed, time, and it doesn't matter what order, um, so I'm gonna do distance, speed, and time, but you can do it however you want. Then over here, you're gonna put object number one, so object one, and object two. So maybe it will be like um, Mary, um, or let's actually be more specific. Jeez, like Kevin, these are people, not objects. Let's give this as Mary, and then the other person is Adam. 
Okay, there we go. Now what we're gonna go do is we're just gonna go fill in whatever we do know. So we know that Adam can drive at 65. Now look at this, MPH. MPH is miles per hour, so that's a type of speed. That's not a distance. Some of you are like, yeah, but Kevin, it says miles, that's distance. Yeah, but it's miles per hour. That's exactly what it says on your car, MPH. That's a speed. Okay, so we know that Adam can drive at 65, so we go fill that in. The next thing that we know is Adam's time. How long does Adam tr drive for? He, it says that after traveling for three hours, okay, so Adam has been traveling for three hours. Now, I know that some of you are like, yeah, but Kevin, shouldn't we say five hours because he left two hours later? But that's not what they mean when they say time. When they say time, they're meaning how long did Adam's vehicle or how long did Adam actually travel for? Um, we don't take that two hours in. We don't say that he's been traveling for five hours. Yes, he waited for two hours and then he drove for three hours but he's been driving for three hours in total. How long has Mary been driving for? Well, um, Mary, Mary decided to leave, right? And how long did Adam wait for? He waited for two hours, okay. And Mary was driving in that time, and then Adam decides to get in his car and start chasing after her, and he drives for three hours. So that, that's five hours in total that Mary was driving for. Okay, so that's how long Mary has been. Um, that's how long Mary has been driving for. So what we can now do is we can try to fill in this one over here, because we know that distance is equal to speed multiplied by time. So for Adam's, let's work out Adam's distance. Distance for Adam. So we know that distance is equal to speed multiplied by time. And so we know his speed was sixty-five, and he drove for three hours. So that would be one hundred and. 95 miles. That is how far, that is how far Adam drove for. Now here's the part that some learners don't understand in the beginning, but then once I explain it, they 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 realize that it actually does make sense. So Adam Adam leaves from the same place, right? And how far does he drive for? He drives 195 miles. At that point, he has caught up to Mary. So how far has Mary been? How far did she drive? Well, she also drove 195 miles. That's why he was able to catch up to her because they've reached the same distance. It wouldn't make sense that Mary's traveled like, I don't know, maybe Mary's traveled 160 and then Adam's traveled 195. That would mean that he passed her, okay? So they travel the same distance. So if we know that Adam's distance is 195, then Mary's distance is also 195. It's not always gonna be like this, but for these questions where the object, where the one object is catching up to another object, then their distance will always be the same. And now we can go and calculate this part over here, the speed, because we know that speed is equal to distance over time, and we know the distance for Mary, and we know the time for Mary, and we can work this out. She's obviously traveled a bit slower than um, Adam, because he was able to catch her. Yep, she only traveled at 39 miles per hour. Now make sure we've answered the question. The question said, find Mary's speed. So yes, we did answer the question. So Mary traveled 39. Now we're gonna do some more examples. Now you will realize that it's gonna start getting a bit faster, okay? So here's some interesting name. Uh, Tutsukana left the airport and traveled towards the recycling plant. Okay, so they're just gonna change the type of things now, but the questions have become very similar. So let's say that this is Tutsukana, um, and he leaves the airport, airport, and he travels to the, I'm just gonna say the plant. Ain't nobody got time for that, recycling plant. I'm just gonna say plant. Um, okay, uh, left the airport, Ming, okay, so this is the person Ming left two hours later and travels at 75 kilometers. Okay, now we're using kilometers in an effort to catch up. After traveling for three hours, Ming finally catches up. Find Tutsukan's average speed. Okay, so we're gonna make a table. Once again, we're gonna use four columns um, and three rows. And we're gonna say um, Tutsukan and we're gonna say Ming, and we're gonna say distance. You can put the whatever you want. You can say speed, time, distance, it doesn't matter. Distance, speed, and time. Right, now we quickly go fill in what we do know. So we know that Ming can drive at 75 kilometers per hour, so that is a speed. Okay, so Ming can do that. Um, how long does Ming travel for? After traveling for three hours, 
So Ming travels for three hours. How long does um, Tutsi Khan travel for? Well, Tutsi Khan left the airport. Um, Ming left two hours later. Okay, so Tutsi Khan was traveling for five hours then, just like the previous example. Um, yeah, you might have to pause and just make sure you understand that. So now we know our formulas for distance, speed, and time. And so we can go fill in this one over here now. So we can go work out Ming's distance. So Ming distance. And so to work out that distance, we can say that D is equal to S multiplied by T. And so if you then had to work that out, you would say the speed of Ming would be 75 multiplied by three, and that's gonna give you 225 kilometers. So we can fill that in. Now remember that with these questions, the distance traveled by both people or by both objects is the same. Not all of these questions are like this, but with these catch-up ones, it does work out like that. So that'll be 225 over there. And now we can just use the speed formula which is speed is equal to distance over time, and that's gonna help us to calculate the um, speed for Totsa Khan. And so that's gonna be 225 over five, and so that's gonna give us 45 kilometers per hour. And then always make sure that we have answered their question, find Totsa Khan's average speed. Yes, we have. Here's the last example. So you might be finding this a bit repetitive now, but that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to take you from someone who might be a bit nervous about these kind of questions and then show you that they're actually not that bad. So once again, for this type of question, we're most likely gonna have to do a table. Um, we make our four columns, three rows. And so that's gonna be um, Pranav and then Kayla. And okay, so pr and then we're gonna put distance, speed, time. Okay, so Pranav left the science museum. Okay, so here's the museum and drove east. Okay, so east. And then Kayla left three hours later driving da da da. After driving for two hours, Kayla finally catches up. Okay, so it's very similar um, to the previous one. So we know that Kayla can drive at 65 miles per hour. So that's gonna be a 65 miles per hour over there. And then how long did Kayla drive for? Well, Kayla left three hours later. That's not how long she drove for. After driving for two hours. Okay, so Kayla drives for two hours. So from our speed, distance, and time formulas, let's quickly write them down again. It's very important that you guys remember these. Okay, so what we can go do now is work out the distance that Kayla travels for. So we can say D is equal to 65 multiplied by two, and that's gonna give us 130 miles. Okay, so we now know 130 miles. Right, now remember that with these questions, the distance traveled by both objects is the same because they're catching up. The one person is catching up. So we can then say that the distance of Pranav is gonna be 130. Now, how long has Pranav been traveling for? Well. Kayla left three hours later and then still had to drive for another two hours. So Pranav traveled for five hours in total. We can now go work out Pranav's speed by saying speed is equal to distance over time. And so we can say that S is equal to um, the distance, which is 130, and then the time is five. And then if we work that out, we end up with a speed of 26. Now always use the correct units. Okay, so they're using miles per hour. So we can say MPH. And so we're, let's just make sure we've answered the question. What was Pranav's average speed? There we have it, 26 miles per hour.